Hi folks, so what I'm going to be going through today is an introduction to parachuting. Uh, usually uh, we use steerable parachutes, uh, but a few of these points are also valid for non-steerable parachutes. Uh, this is mainly for people who don't have the ability or the time to jump into our training sessions on Thursdays and Sundays when we, uh, we have been practicing this quite a lot recently. Um, due to the fact that we have the uh, TFA pairs competition coming up, which anybody can join, and that starts off with a uh, parachute jump. Okay, so on the uh, TFA training server, we have a couple of different options for uh, practicing your, your halo jumping. Uh, one of them is at the main base, which is Altis Airport, and the other one is at the CQB live fire zone. Um, if you use the CQB live fire zone, it's a good option to practice uh, hot landings because you can get a whole bunch of uh, enemies spawned in into this area here. Then you'd have to come down and try to avoid getting shot while you're doing it. Or if somebody else is using the CQB zone while you're practicing here, uh, then that's what you're going to have to deal with uh, being shot while you're in the air. Uh, if you want to just practice your jumps in general, uh, then you can go to the base, spawn at Altis Airport, and everything is set up there ready for you to go. Both work identically. There's a laptop system there which uh, allows you to uh, spawn into an aircraft and jump, test gear everything. I'll show you how that works right now. So here we are at the uh, Altis Base Airport. And as mentioned, TFA PERS event, which happens on the 29th of March, holster weapon. Starts off with uh, precision parachuting. So in your buddy pair, you're gonna have to jump out of an airplane, land as close to possible uh, to uh, set landing zone, and then move on to the next skill. So obviously, the better you are at that, the more accurate you are. Then the quickly, more quickly, you can move on to the next section. So. Um, First thing that you need to sort out, uh, highly recommended before you jump out of an aeroplane uh, when you're going to be using a steerable parachute or even when you're using a non-steerable parachute is knowing where the wind is coming from. So we've got a few different ways to do that. Uh, I'll start with the least accurate and the least uh, my least preferred, which is those things up there in the sky. You don't always have them. But when you do have them, they always move in the direction that the wind is set. If, if the wind suddenly changed direction now from, what was it blowing from? Uh, northeast, those clouds are moving from to southwest. If the wind suddenly changed directions, then the cloud movement would also suddenly change direction. So you can look up and see which direction the clouds are heading, and then you'll know which direction the wind is moving. Uh, that can be confirmed by the next best, stop, best option, which is having some flags around, because flags always uh, point in the direction the wind is blowing. Uh, so those flags are pretty much telling you that the wind is blowing from that direction to that direction. And the best option, of course, is using the ACE if you have ACE enabled uh, ACE wind detection. So if you hit Shift K, then up in the top left of your screen there, you get the arrow, which gives you the wind direction. And it gives you a wind strength, which at the moment is three dots. That can go all the way up to five or possibly even six dots, uh, which means we've got an average amount of wind coming. That is going to affect your um, parachute landing, uh, especially if you're not using a, uh, a steerable parachute. If you're coming down in a non-steerable parachute, that wind is going to be taking you in that direction at that speed. Uh, but for us, for our operations, which are always going to be either hair low or lay low, high altitude, low opening, or low altitude, low opening, um, you're going to be wearing a steerable parachute, so you have some control over where you land. But the wind is still going to have an effect. It is something you need to take into consideration before you jump. So the first thing I always do before I get into an airplane with a parachute on is working out which direction the wind is coming from. If you look at my uh, compass down there, you can see it's roughly... 50 degrees so the wind is coming from 50 degrees and it's traveling the reciprocal of that which would be 230 degrees so north east southwest is the wind direction now on a uh, tfa training surfer uh, it's set like that unless somebody messes about it with it with it in zeus it's always going to be set at that so you're going to be uh, looking at 50 degrees so for the actual uh, jumping itself, when you want to practice, we have a laptop set over here, which is very simple to use and to understand. So first thing we need to do is use mouse scroll wheel. 
uh, and take a parachute. And before I do that, if I check into my inventory, you can see that I've got a uh, backpack which has equipment in it already. If I change to take a parachute, once I select take a parachute from there, I'm going to get a message up in the top right corner of my screen there which says you are safe to jump. Now select drop zone. That means I have a parachute. So if I quickly go to my, well, let's go into third person. Oh, no, I can't because I've got it set, so I can't go into third person. Go into the inventory again. Uh, you'll see my backpack has been replaced with a steerable parachute uh, and all that equipment has gone. When you finish your jump and you land on the ground, what will automatically happen is that parachute will be taken away and your original pack will be replaced. So you don't need to worry about that. So first thing, once you've got your parachute, next thing is to select a drop zone. Uh, you have two main options here. It's back out of there. If um, you are landing in a non-hot zone, then the best option, in my uh, opinion, is to land downwind. Uh, what happens then is you're facing in towards your uh, selected landing zone. The wind is blowing into your face and your forward momentum is slowed down um, you, because your parachute is always moving forwards when you're using a steerable parachute. Um, so you can use the wind traveling towards you and your parachute itself movement to keep yourself in the right position to land on your landing zone. Uh, and you will be kind of hovering a, a lot, moving very, very slowly, uh, and it is quite accurate. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be hovering in the air above a zone when you have enemy fire coming at you. So in a hot zone, the best option is to land facing downwind. So then you can use the wind speed itself and your parachute speed to propel yourself forwards at a high rate of movement, uh, which should hopefully avoid some of the enemy fire. But if you do that, then you have to be very careful about making sure that you leave the aircraft uh, well upwind uh, and are good, good at steering your parachute. Um, for a training server, when you jump out of the aircraft, the aircraft is going to be hovering exactly above wherever you select as a landing zone. The aircraft will not move. When you're on a mission, generally, the aircraft is going to be moving, so you have to be very well coordinated with the pilot with the crew to make sure that you're jumping out exactly where you want to jump out and making sure you uh, co communicate to the pilot or to the uh, crew chief that you want a specific location to be dropped from so let's go back over to the laptop we've got our parachute still uh, so let's select a drop zone uh, the wind is traveling this direction so I'm going to try select a landing zone, which is a little bit downwind of where I want to go. So let's go over here. Uh, and next thing is to select an altitude. I'm going to go from 2,000 meters, give myself a little bit of time to prepare. So I'll select 2,000 meters. Now I'll get a message there, altitude set, select board plane. So let's just go down to board plane. So this will now TP us into the actual aircraft itself. So once we get there, I know that the uh, wind direction uh, was 50 degrees because I checked that before I got here. So what I normally do is get my body facing in the direction that I want to be uh, facing when I leave the aircraft, which is into the wind. So what I would then do when I leave the aircraft is I'd go out of the aircraft like that. So I'm facing into the wind and I don't have to do, to do any steering. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, let's go out facing directly towards the back of the aircraft which means I'll have to do some steering when I get out. So I've got the red light, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit uh, Shift K, which will bring up my wind uh, speed indicator. It won't become active until I actually leave the aircraft, and it will disappear as soon as I deploy my parachute. So you only have uh, your wind speed indicator available uh, when you are in free fall. So let's go. The other thing that I'm going to do when I jump out is I'm going to go to head movement so I'm going to hit double alt so that when I move my mouse around instead of my body moving all I'm doing is looking around which allows me to look around try to find my drop zone without affecting my uh, direction of movement in my parachute so let's go so there we go the wind uh, indicator has appeared uh, we know uh, the wind is traveling in that direction, so I'm using my A key now to turn myself around so that that wind direction arrow 
is pointing directly down my screen which is as we said on the ground is about around 50 so we're now facing into the wind so when we deploy our parachute we will be traveling in towards it I can use my mouse to look around I'm going to deploy my parachute a little bit early so I've got some options to steer oh way 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 off there look uh, I selected a completely wrong zone I'm not paying attention so now we've got a message there that says your equipment will be, will be returned shortly after landing so now as you can see if I press forwards uh, I'm speeding up my movement press backwards I'm slowing it down so what you need to do just before you land is hit S a little bit so that will give you a nice soft landing okay so that's how it works in principle now I'm going to actually show you accurate uh, how I use it to accurately land rather than uh, me choosing the wrong landing zone stop recording so on the uh, training server, uh, we have, uh, let me get rid of that first, two uh, practice zones that you can aim for, so one that's northwest, one that's southeast, uh, which generally the direction of the wind is always traveling in this direction on the map. Um, so those are what you can aim for. Uh, if you're going to be doing multiple uh, landings and uh, uh, re -spawn, or re respawning in a parachute, then the best thing to do is to try to land somewhere near the base, because then you can go directly to the laptop. Uh, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to choose one of these two landing zones and try to land there. So let's go do that again. So once more, take a parachute. Uh, actually, just to demonstrate, uh, my equipment was returned after my uh, last landing. So I'm back to my original uh, loadout with everything in it. So I'll take a parachute select a drop zone uh, this time let's do it accurately instead of like all the way over there uh, let's drop it about here and let's do the same thing uh, 2000 meters and board the plane so it's going to be the same again this time um, I'm going to go out in the direction I want to face so we know that it's wind is coming from five zero degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to face myself five zero and then I'm going to kind of crab sideways out of the aircraft so I can set my wind speed hitting shift K don't need to wait for a green light I'm going to go as soon as I hear the ramp opening or as soon as I see the ramp opening holster weapon Yeah, so turn around 50 degrees so when I move out of the aircraft now I should be facing directly into the direction of the wind which I, I am as you can see from the arrow up in the top left side using mouse look to look for my uh, landing zone there we go coming into sight now so I'm going to deploy my chute now okay so now I'm traveling into the wind so you see my maximum forward speed is about 37 knots uh, if I turn around and face away from the wind or in the wind direction the wind is traveling sorry so we said about 230 now if I press my forwards well, you can see my speed goes all the way up to 60 70 kilometers an hour because I'm now traveling with the wind um, if you're traveling lateral then that becomes very very difficult to control so it's a good idea to always make sure that you've got your wind direction and speed sorted out before you land okay so let's try that one more time Okay, so this time I've uh, chosen the same, pretty much the same landing zone as last time. I'm actually jumping from a thousand meters, so it will give me a little bit less time to uh, prepare. Uh, but that's fine for Lalo. So, holster weapon. Get myself facing in the right direction, five zero, approximately. Come on, door. Do your job. Okay, so let's go. Up. 
bring up my uh, wind reading shift gear set myself to uh, mouse head movement so I can have a look around I'm going to deploy a little bit early so I've got time to steer bring myself down using my W key now to move forwards uh, I'm only using my Q and E keys to uh, try to fine tune it if the wind blows me a little bit off course but I try to avoid using those if you're using uh, wind direction correctly then uh, just the wind using the wind to slow yourself down speed yourself up is the best way to actually get yourself in accurately rather than using your steering keys Q and E so if I let off the button a little bit now and then bring it in a little bit more see that's another good option to slow down your forwards movement and then again flaring just before you land to slow down your speed okay right next option that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the opposite I'm gonna do uh, a, a, a speed of landing so I'm gonna go uh, from an upwind position I'm gonna move with the wind so it'll be a very fast approach towards the LZ so this time um, I've set my landing zone as you can see uh, up here so it's a little bit upwind uh, and I'm gonna be trying to approach with the wind going in this direction so when I jump I'm gonna be traveling pretty fast uh, to try to avoid as I said enemy fire as I'm coming down into the LZ so my direction of travel this time is gonna be opposite 50 so 230 degrees so I'm gonna get myself facing in that direction 230 before I leave the aircraft shift gear brings up the wind because I'm on the rear of the ramp it's already there and off I go Save my head movement with double out so I can look around for my landing zone. And you can see up there the speed that I'm traveling and the altitude that I'm at. This is why I don't really use an altimeter watch because they're unnecessary. Uh, so with this one I'm going to get a little bit lower before I deploy otherwise uh, we're going to have all sorts of problems with the wind. So open parachute. And now if I don't actually do any steering and I don't do any pushing forwards, my forward movement speed is already at 36, 37 kilometers an hour. So you can see that the wind is already having an effect on my uh, movement speed. And let's go, let's try and land over at the actual laptop this time so we don't have to uh, walk back and I don't have to keep pausing the video. But you can see it's 64, 65 kilometers an hour. I'm coming in very ra rapidly now. Uh, I can let off the S key, uh, off the W key, sorry, to slow down my movement, coming in very fast, then last minute, flare hard, and land. Uh, so that's the best way to do it if you're, as I said, under fire, but generally it's better to come in upwind for better control. Yeah, so for this demonstration, uh, because we don't always get to choose where we want to uh, jump from, uh, I've put my landing zone a little bit out to the side here so instead of like uh, having a wind in our favor either into or from the wind uh, we're getting uh, a lateral wind which means it's going to be a little bit more complicated we're going to have to use a lot more steering to get into our uh, landing zone so as usual set my wind indicator Turn ourselves around first into the wind. Okay, so now we have our landing zone. We can actually use W now. So if we hit W, we're already moving towards our landing zone. Open the parachute. And then once we, as we're going down, then we can use our Q and E to steer ourselves into the right position. Take it downwind a little bit so that we can use the wind to freeze our position, try and get us right above the uh, landing zone. Bring ourselves back around. Then we can use the W key to bring ourselves down towards the landing spot. S key. Hangs in the air for a little second so we can fine tune a little bit. S key. 
and then there we go just refine it as you're coming down um, so a little bit more complicated if you're coming in from the side of the wind but uh, best option is to make sure you know the direction of your landing zone especially if you can't see it so you can use your w key before you deploy your parachute to move yourself towards it um, and then you don't have to use, do so much uh, fine tuning uh, with the steerage once you actually deployed your chute. There is a third option for practicing uh, jumping on the uh, training server, TFA training server, which is uh, using the method we sometimes use, which is where you have to put your backpack onto your chest, take a parachute and then jump and then remember to replace it when you get down. So that is a setup over here. So as you can see, we get a is interact back back on chest then take a parachute so that's a hint for you so what you need to do is go into ace interact where is it equipment backpack on chest so ace interact which is control and windows key go to equipment and go to backpack on chest and you can now go to the inventory and you can see that my backpack is not present there uh, currently. I can put a sterile parachute on and I'm now ready to jump. And uh, watch when I start walking now, it's going to be very, very slow. You can't jog or, or speed up or anything when you've got a backpack on your chest. It's very, very slow movement. So we go to this aircraft now. By the way, this is on the opposite side of the airport from the uh, spawn area. So that's where we spawn and this is where this aircraft set up is here. So when you get here, again using a mouse scroll wheel, uh, you can go to. The, uh, this is also this is good for squads, by the way. The other one is better for like single people, but this one you can use your entire squad. So the jump master would go to the scroll wheel, select start halo jump, and then you get a message preparing aircraft, and then boarding in five seconds, and there we go. So everybody who is in the Jump Masters group would now be in the aircraft. But same as before, we know the wind direction is the same. Quick look at your map. You can see that we are actually directly above the airfield, directly between the two landing zones. So the wind is coming in this direction, so we really want to be facing the same as before. Oh yeah, you see out of the window, you can see which direction the clouds are moving as well. Which is kind of handy, because that tells us where this wind is, uh, 5 zero degrees. Holster weapon. Set my wind, set my headlock, and jump. Quite cloudy at the moment, we're going through the clouds, so you can see the clouds moving in our direction. And our altitude is, uh, we jumped at 4000, so this is going to be a little bit uh, slower. Passing 2000 now. Fifteen hundred. Should be able to see the airfield any time now. After we pass through, there we go. So there's our landing zone, and let's open at three fifty. Well, three hundred it was actually, but it will do. Let's go for the northern landing spot. So again, try to avoid using q &E as much as possible, they're there, they're there for steering, uh, but if you start doing circles it makes things very complicated. 
So let's just try and get as close as we can and hit flare and get down. That was actually not a good jump for me. Usually I can get inside the uh, box every single time, but um, yeah, not this time, of course, because I'm demonstrating it. So as you can see, when I've landed now, I've still got my parachute on, so I can only move very, very slowly. So look at my inventory. Oops, uh, wrong key. Uh, still got a parachute. So what I need to do is drop the parachute now, then go to my uh, air settings again, equipment, and backpack on back. So if I go to my inventory now, I'm back to my original backpack with all this stuff uh, included. Uh, so it's a little bit difficult. Uh, I mean, a little bit different. Uh, it means you're going to have a big pile of parachutes landing uh, in the landing zone. Um, and everybody has to remember to take a parachute because if it's not done automatically and you don't take one, then you're going to be making a big splat when you hit the ground instead of an accurate landing. Okay, so I uh, hope this was useful. hope you can uh, make some uh, use from this, uh, especially in the pairs mission or when that starts up on the 29th of March. Uh, for anybody who's not in TFA, if you're watching this video and you want to jump into the group and have a chat, I will leave the Discord link uh, in the description down below uh, so you can jump in and uh, have a few games with us. We're open to everybody from absolute beginner, absolute noob to uh, ex-veteran, 10,000 hours in armor. Everybody can join. Everybody has a good time. Um, so, yep, hope to see you uh, in the server and in the sky at some point soon. Uh, drop me a like, drop me a subscribe if you haven't already. It uh, would be very much appreciated. Thanks all. See you soon. Stop recording.